All right. It moved. We're good. Well, how are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I uh, Monday morning's coming off the road, so uh, it's kind of like my Saturday and Sundays. <laughs> Were you out uh, traveling this weekend at all? No, I'm I'm home. I have a little downtime before uh, go compete at the finals. So go run in a few barrel races, but that's it. Awesome, awesome. And the finals you're talking about the NFR, I'm assuming. Re yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to dive right in. This is Linda Johnson. Where are you from? I heard Oklahoma, right? Yeah, I'm from Arizona originally. Live currently live in Oklahoma. And what part? I'm in Pahuska, northern Oklahoma. Right on, right on. Well, I don't know if they really explained to you what we're trying to accomplish here, but you know, with my crowd, obviously it's a music crowd, and I know a lot of people don't understand the behind the scenes and what it takes to to make the actual show part happen. You know, a lot of people think we just step on stage and ta-da, here we are. <laughs> and uh, with our new song being called Keep Up With a Cowgirl, we wanted to dive into the life of the cowgirl and, and what it's like doing what you do and just hear your story. So I'm going to go right to the beginning. So you said you grew up in Arizona. Tell us about that part and when you moved and, and how did you get your start? Well, I grew up around horses. We had a boarding facility growing up and uh, my siblings and I would go spend you know, countless hours riding horses uh, and and doing what we love. And and one thing I developed at a really young age is loved going fast on horses. And they gave us the ability to have wings and fly. And from, a, I mean, and I'm talking, I'm from five years old. I, I We would be going as fast as we could on our little ponies. We'd come up with different ways to, to just see, oh, if we let them run, run home maybe they'll run faster i mean we we would come up with all sorts of things to just ask for more speed and so i've always enjoyed going fast uh my parents were great and very supportive about putting us into competitions at a young age and so we did a variety of competitions and you know i was raised in the city so you know i wasn't raised on a ranch like a lot of the rodeo kids uh we we were we were right in the middle of the city with um all those kind of modern conveniences around us, but yet we had this small town feel because we had this farm that was grandfathered in, in the middle of town. And uh, it was the best childhood anybody could ever ask for. I mean, we even mm -hmm. had a pond, so we swam our horses. We, you know, we just, yeah. we created all sorts of things. Um, so it was a fantastic childhood and afforded the opportunity to get to compete and develop um one thing that that I think really did help me in my competition currently uh, develop the ability to manage the uh, the mental aspect of competition. That's both awesome. my parents were you know good coaches and and very supportive and and that was that's a great thing that I'm really grateful for that I got at a young age uh, is how to uh, manage the nerves with competition. So um, I, you know, I high school rodeoed and college rodeoed and that type of thing. And I, I stepped away from competition for a while, um, you know, got married, had a couple kids and in, enjoyed kind of the ranch life. So I married a, a rancher. So uh, I still have horses in my life, didn't necessarily compete, which was perfectly fine with me at the time, um, but loved the ranch, um, put a lot of miles on horses. And um, that was a great part of my life at that time and and um you know could never step away from horses completely even if somebody tried to force me I would I would do anything to to be around a horse even now if I have to go clean somebody's horse stalls I will do that because I I really do enjoy horses that much um then I had the opportunity to compete again um, for a friend of mine and they were in a little bit of a jam and couldn't find anybody ride their horse that was really talented so I went ahead and agreed and just did a really unique situation where I really just jump mounted um, the horse and, and that's how I started back into the competition world um, and then felt like I had a really nice balance I'm in a little bit more of a unique situation I don't train full-time like most of the competitors and um, I, I ride every day. I love to ride, uh, but it, but I'm not necessarily out, you know, starting colts and riding and bringing another one along. So, uh, so I, I uh, you know, did in that 10 years, you know, I, I did go, you know, go to school. And um, so I kind of have a little bit of everything that I do. So I, I am a nurse practitioner and I work just part time, which is uh, really nice. It's around my schedule. 
uh, kind of help out our local hospital when they need help. And um, that works out really well. I still, uh, my husband manages a ranch, so I help him. I'm not, you know, not all the time necessarily, but if I'm free and I can jump in with him or whatever. So that's really nice. And then um, we homeschool our girls. So that keeps me a little busy and I homeschool the girls and, uh, and then I run barrels kind of part-time. I really don't do it full-time. I do it um, uh, kind of on this a side, essentially. Uh, I'm not going down the road every day, all day, like a lot of the gals. Um, I try to really balance it. I try to just pick and choose where I go and try to really maximize the rodeos I go to and the events I go to um, just so I don't have to go every weekend and down the road full time. So uh, that's where my life kind of is. I, I feel like I have a little of everything. Um, I, you know, I'm pretty active in the community. I try to, you know, donate my time or um, provide service and that type of thing as well. So uh, I, I have a kind of a full plate, uh, but it's all very manageable and it's all things I really enjoy. And I feel very lucky and, and grateful that um, being a cowgirl is just one of the many aspects of my life and having the chance to be around these amazing animals that just give us everything and allow us to go run around some barrels. It's, it's uh, amazing what training will do and what these horses are really willing to do for us. That's really amazing. I, I, I've heard a couple of things I wanted to touch on when you kind of started on there and I'm going to make sure my AD didn't kick in that I remember every one of them that I heard. So I'm going to go back to the very beginning there. And I know you kind of touched on that y'all didn't exactly ranch ranch, but were, did your parents, were they competitors as far as barrel racing and stuff? Or was it ranch oriented? Like what, what got you going as far as, as actually competing? My mom actually was a very avid, um, horse competitor she did all sorts of events from the time she was young um and in she was the only one in her family that even had any interest in horses so she did it all on her own um and so she you know from english jumping you know she did all sorts of things yeah. she did get into rodeo later in life and um not till college and um was at uh, actually in arizona was the miss rodeo arizona in 66 and and then uh, her national team at college finals ended up third one year. So she, you know, very competitive um, on a on a higher level and um, enjoys it, loves it. My mom to this day is loves rodeo, has rodeo fever. I mean, she yeah. gets more excited about the finals than uh, anybody else I know. And she just, it's something she looks forward to and, and it's um, really drives her. And then my dad just was, um, he never competed in, with horses or anything. You know, his was more, you know, backpacking, hunt, you know, mm -hmm. packing horses in and hunting and that type of stuff. Um, very supportive around our place and helpful. And he, you know, always enjoyed watching us and cheering us on and, and um, would go to all the big races and finals with us. And so it was fun. I had an amazing childhood and very supportive parents that, really did spend the time to help me develop a skill that, um, that I have that continued on and that I have today. Awesome. That's awesome. So what, uh, were you ever influenced by the English style or any of the other types of compet you know, competing you could do, or was it always, you know, rodeo for you? No, absolutely. So because my mom's background, um, how I was taught to ride uh, is a little bit more of an English style. I'm a little more forward and try to stay in the middle of the horse. It, it, essentially, even my saddle, the saddles we used, um, even though it's a Western saddle, is built a little bit more like an English saddle, which is unusual for uh, most of the Western saddles kind of put you back just, just a bit pat back behind the middle of the horse um, and your feet are kind of back. Um, uh, I have a really hard time actually riding that way. So I use a saddle that um, is built a little bit more like English and a little closer contact and then stay up. You know, we never held the horn or touched the horn growing up in the barrel racing pin um, because my mom had that English background and um, kind of the, the, style that she used and taught us then you know it wasn't about holding on or you know it was yeah. ride with your horse stay with your horse be in the middle of your horse so do you feel like that gave you an edge over people that were influenced the other direction I definitely think uh, horsemanship is such a huge factor in competing 
and and I'm a huge advocate for um, making sure that you're strong enough, like so strengthening your core. Oh, you know, we rode bareback a lot. Um, Mike and run bare, bare, barrels bareback um, have some videos floating around out there of, you know, wide open barrel racing bareback, still competitive. Um, but that's because that's that's all we did. So uh, we rode around bareback every day of my life, essentially. And um, but one thing that that promoted was that core strength and was um, minimizing how much that we relied on the saddle horn and relied on our stirrups for balance. It was all core strength, stay in the middle, that type of thing. Yeah. So one thing you mentioned on, and, and uh, it's funny because I've interviewed, interviewed a few uh, other riders here the last week, and some were very young and some were like you've been around for a while. Do you feel like at some point, you know, did you start off wanting to ride every chance you could, compete every chance you could, and then finally you realized it was more about making them count compared to all the times? And what was the transition there for you? Because you, you touched on that when you were talking earlier. Well, um, for me, I do uh, I, I do love to ride. So that's my main driving factor. The competitive side doesn't necessarily drive me. Uh, I'm completely happy you know, staying in a local race, I go to the local play days. I'm just as happy there as I am at Reno or even the finals. Um, so I don't, I maybe have a little bit different of a, approach on that competitive factor. Um, the, so I never was one that was like, oh, I have to go to this one. I have to go to that one. Yeah. Even the finals never really, I mean, even at a younger age going through high school, I was like, yeah, yeah, the finals. Sure. If you make it. That's no big great. deal, right? <laughs> yeah, and and I know it's an accomplishment because I know what it takes. Um, but it's not something that I was like, I have to do this. I'll do whatever it takes to make it there. Um, and uh, and if I would have never competed there, it would have been perfectly fine. There are so many different associations that have big events and um, big races that um, at this point I really look at more. I am riding horses that are very talented. I want to utilize their skill. I'm going to, uh, and in each of their runs. So it, to me, it doesn't matter if it's the finals at the NFR or at the American or at a big open rodeo or a big barrel race. I, I really just, I look at it more like, Hey, these horses are good enough that I want to, um, be conscientious on, on their runs and not waste a run on them. And there's plenty of rodeos that you only win 500 bucks. So <laughs> I I don't want to waste a run on them essentially there when I could be going at a barrel race and winning, you know, 10,000 or something like that. So um, I, I, so my approach, I don't know if I explained that well enough, but I, uh, I really do try to um, be conscientious on, what is best, what's going to be the most beneficial for the horses, for me, for my friends that own the horses, you know, so it's, it's uh try to make it a win-win for everybody, make it still enjoyable, help the horses love their job. That I, I feel like that's an important thing um, that it's easy for competitors to overlook. Sometimes it's easier for competitors to be like, Hey, I'm going to do this no matter what. And, you know, sometimes when we have that approach, we tend to force it out of our horses and they they'll give it to us i mean they're amazing but sometimes we can burn through them a little bit sooner um i don't run my horses a lot and and i and i think it's been beneficial i look at them now the two geldings i ride and and they love their job i mean they're excited their ears are forward they want to go out there and they want to go run barrels and and uh and so that mean that brings me more satisfaction the development side of helping a horse love their job. Look, they don't have a choice. Look, I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a choice and I love to ride. They afford me that so I can go ride. I want them to love their job. And um, because they, I feel like they'll give you so much more heart when they love their job. So you truly, I, I'm seeing a difference, you know, and I, I've been around the horse world to an extent, but not to the level of, you know, going to the top of things that like that. But I see a difference and I see it in music. Some people truly love music. Some people love music, but they love the, the, the rush and the attention and the crowd. You seem to truly care about the horses and the bond with the horse. I mean, am I catching on with that one pretty good? Yeah, I would, I would say that's definitely accurate. Um, it's funny, the crowd deal. 
I don't even notice it. I block <laughs> out. I, I mean, and it doesn't do any necessarily anything for me um, for my performance or anything. Um, you know, I just focus in and, and essentially my responsibility as a writer uh, is to go in there and make three turns. And if I focus on um, helping my horse, uh, I mean, my our goal is, or my goal is to really help that horse. They're smart. They know where to go. I, if I can get to the point where I don't have to tell them one thing through the run, that isn't an ideal thing. That is true training and getting them to the ability uh, or to the point where they can go make a run on their own, essentially without us. I'm there if they need me or if they need to, if they're going to step off or something, then I'm there to make a correction. But I really don't want to be in their way. I really don't want to touch their face or pull on them um, or even have to whip them or kick them because they should know their job. Right. And so the quieter I can be and get the most uh, efficiency out of a run, the better. And, and, you know, and I, I'm not a real aggressive rider. I mean, I, I, I know sometimes there's a time and a place I'll occasionally, I might bump one into a barrel or, you know, bump, you know, whip them through the line or something, but I really try not to whip and kick on them because there does come a point too that, they, they know their job. They're going to go give me everything. And, and I'm on, you know, they're racehorses. So they're, they're pretty fast. <laughs> I don't really have to go whip on, on my horses, but, um, but I love that, that they go out and they try their best and they go work on getting to their points without me having to tell them where to go. And so that's, um, I don't know if that answered your question necessarily either, but, um, yeah. but that's what I, I, I do love the horses and I do care about them. And I, and it really comes back to, I want them to enjoy their job. They, they literally don't have a choice on uh, most horses. We're like, you're going to be a barrel horse. And so um, I, I feel like if I can make that transition easy for them, that they understand it and they know where they need to put their feet, then they're going to make a very nice horse for a really long time. And even when you get in a little bit of a wreck, um, on rodeo ground, it's been a very well-known factor that the ground is usually a fact that it's can be unsafe. And so I've been on enough horses and maybe enough sketchy places, even as kids, the things we did um, when a horse is in a wreck or going to go down, um, the best thing you can do is let them have their, their head so they can catch themselves. And so if on that if I'm in a rodeo run, potentially on bad ground, I do want them to have their head. If they do slip, they can catch themselves. So that's another reason for me to try to stay out of their face and not pull on them if necessary. So I think there's several things that, that, um, that I, you know, in the back of my mind kind of think about and, and keep in mind. So, um, uh, but ultimately, yeah, I, I really do want what's best for these horses and, and, you know, um, I'm along for the journey. This is just something that I hadn't necessarily planned, just another fun part of life and feel really blessed that get the opportunity. It's always fun to get to go do things at a high level and um, compete with amazing competitors. And and that's what, you know, when you get talented horses like the ones I'm riding, then that's what they afford you is the opportunity to go compete and go have some fun. and. And and I'm all about having some fun. Well, speaking of that, did I hear you finished ninth in the entire world last year? Is that correct? I think so. You know, I honestly don't follow it that close. So, <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. I think I did ninth and maybe like 12th or 13th the year before. Um, That's still I'm, awesome, though. Well, you know, so I, I don't go to a lot. So I the last two years, I came into the NFR on a very low count. You know, we're required to go to 25. So... I think last year I went to 26 rodeos to get into the finals and into the ninth of world. I was going to ask you that. How, how, how many dates a year is, is that pretty your average for now? I mean, how, how much are you gone yeah. a year at this point? Right there. Um, I'm, I'm not gone that much. Uh, I essentially, I love what I did this year. I went to the winter rodeos, which are just about one a month kind of through, you know, from January to August or no, I'm sorry, from January to April and um, there's like May, March is a little busy, but um, so it's not too, too bad through the winter. And then uh, I just made a little summer run. I was gone a month and a half and 
that's it. Sent them home. I sent the geldings home at the uh, beginning of August. And, and then I caught two rodeos right at the tail end of the season in September. I love it. I love it. So let's dive into a day. Like for us, you know, like I talked about at the beginning, so people think we just step on stage, grab a guitar, and here we are. There's so much prep that goes into it between setup and getting there. You're getting ready to leave the house. Run us through your process. What's it like when you travel? How do you travel? What, what's the, the, the day once you're there? Go, go set that scene for us. Well, and like I said before, because I don't train full time and I don't have these horses, so I jump mount them and I still jump mount them. And so the horses actually live in Fort Worth. Um, they That's were right. just, yes. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, and they were just sold to High Point uh, performance horses. So now they're in Pilot Point, essentially. Um, we are keeping the kind of the arrangement the same. So my friend that that um, is the barn manager that trained these geldings um, is in Fort Worth. And so he's going to continue to exercise them every day and keep them in shape. And then I'm going to continue to jump mount them. So they're still down in Texas. Uh, if what I've done in the past, if there was a race south of Fort Worth, then I'd run down to Fort Worth, you know, five and a half hours, run down to Fort Worth and um, jump in with them, go to the race for the weekend or whatever, and then come home, you know, drop the horses off and then come home. Um, if there was a race north of there, they'd meet me at Oklahoma City or Guthrie or whatever. Occasionally, I take them home if I need to. Um, it's not because I can't take them home. They just, in general, didn't didn't need it. Um, I, yeah. I would take them home if they needed some fine tuning on more ranch work. So I would utilize the ranch and, and help these geldings in different ways. And so I have taken them um, all home at one point or another. And uh, so that's been a nice tool to use too. Um, so, so now I'll, same thing, I'll still just drive down, go grab the horses and put them in the trailer and go to a race. Uh, I'm still planning on kind of keeping the same schedule of going to the winter rodeos, kind of the bigger stuff, the bigger barrel races. And so it'll, it'll be, still somewhat part-time it's um you know a couple times a month probably at the most um and there's times that it, there's busy times like march is a really busy month so you know i might have to go make 10 runs that month or whatever so luckily i have two horses that are both unbelievably talented so i can kind of split them so even like this this summer that i was gone a month and a half um i don't know how many runs i made total i think i ended up making I don't know, 12 or 15 runs in a month and a half, something like that. I don't even know if it was that many, but I just split it between the two horses and it worked really, really well. And they were both very successful, pulled checks everywhere. They did fantastic. Even like Nampa, I rode one horse in the first go and another horse in the, the other horse in the second go and ended up second in the average and, you know, second, first go tied for first, second go, second in the average. So they're, they're very, very solid, very, um, competitive and I feel like I can split those runs which is nice just to minimize um how much travel time they're getting and even then I really am very careful about how much I travel I don't like to drive all night and then run them yeah. so I usually go and I take my time I'm kind of the barrel racer mode of you show up a day or two before you let them acclimate you have some downtime um and then get prepared for the competitive run and then kind of move on to the other. So like I split mine, you know, have a race every couple of days or whatever. And, and I'm really conscientious of that. And like I said, every once in a while, I'll have to stack them in there or something, but um, in general, I'll, I'll, I'll ask really you about that. So, cause I'm kind of saying, you know, I, I'm comparing everything to what I do with music. And when you're, when you first start, it's run, gun, run, gun, ride every day, tour every day, every opportunity is a yes. And, you know, we interviewed a, a girl last week that was a rookie and that's kind of the mindset I saw. She, you know, she's gone 200 something dates a year. If she shows up at the last minute, jump straight out, jump straight in the ring, it's fine with her. W were you like that in the beginning or have you always been patient or is that kind of a fine yeah. line as you, you've gotten older and more experienced? Um, yeah, no, I've never been <clears throat> running and gunning that way. Um, obviously there, it does take a lot of energy and effort and a lot of prep and prepare time. Uh, I, I look at the what what's beneficial long term. 
Um, I really do. I'm not looking at the immediate, necessarily always the immediate goal. I'm looking at, okay, what do I need to do to help these horses become really nice horses and be really nice horses for a long time? These horses, it, 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 you put so much time, it takes, you know, one, two, three years to really get one solid and seasoned and experienced enough and good enough that that you could put almost anybody on them um and then they can have a 10 12 15 year career if you just do it right and and i and i feel like that's where i'm at now the you know i'm writing a 9 year old i feel like he's seasoned and solid now that just about anybody can jump on him and go make a run he is now he knows his job he understands he's he's solid and loves it and so I feel like the time that I've put in, I've been on him for four years now. And, and, and that's what really brings a lot of kind of joy to me and makes it worth it to me is to see that horse, how he has developed and how solid he really has become. And, um, and, you know, cause the short-term goal. Okay. Yeah. So if you, if, if you do just jump on a horse last minute and go make a run, you can, we can do that. All of us can do that. Um, but what, what always worries me is you run the risk of injury. If they're not warmed up properly, look, I warm up in a, in a cool down is really, really important to me. And that's something I spend a lot of time on and, um, knock on wood, but we, I haven't had any injuries, um, in the rodeo pen yet, which on some of the ground we've ran on it, that's been even almost dangerous. They've been able to, um, maintain because they can think their way through a run. Um, and so, so I, I've, I've never been like a runner and gunner and my sister's that way. She's a goer. She has a lot of great qualities. My mom is that way They're, I mean, just go, go, go all the time. And, and it, there's a time and a place for it. And I don't, I can do it if necessary, but I really do want to see that long-term goal happen. The way I look at it is, you know what, what, what if I don't get qualified this year? That's okay. I mean, it, in the, in the long run. Um, it doesn't affect where I am personally or affect me mentally because this is just icing on the cake. If, if things come together and it all works out, um, it's just another amazing adventure of life. Um, but it doesn't define who I am as a person and, and I'm not going to let it control. I'm not going to let that one goal control my life or put my horses at risk. So uh, I don't know. That's kind of my approach. And I probably shouldn't yeah. be saying that too loud because uh, I know the rodeo world, it is a uh, running and gunning and going and pushing all the time. And, and that's fine. You know, it's fine. We, we all can do it. Um, but in the long run, what, what is, what is life really about and mm -hmm. what are we really trying to accomplish? I, to me, it's more important to be a good person and do things right and treat my horses right. And and enjoy the experience as it comes. And so right or wrong, that's, <laughs> that's kind of my approach. And, and I really do just feel pretty lucky, pretty blessed that, that, um, that I get the opportunity and, and, um, get to have some fun in the meantime. That's awesome. So I'm, I'm going to dive back into even on your horses a little more. I hadn't asked this. So do y'all train and breed your own? Do, do you look for a certain breed? I mean, what's your process when you're picking a horse or getting a horse, that whole thing? So there's so many different options and, and especially like, and I think like any event, um, there's so many different ways that you can train. I mean, there's a million ways to train a barrel horse. So it probably depends on the individual, what the individual's skill set is, what kind of horse they need and do they need a, more of a cutting horse or something that's like really trainable or has a lot of turn that you have to push into a turn or is somebody okay with a little speed and wants some race horses, you know, like me, I'm pretty, uh, I can about ride anything. Um, it, growing up, I know I mentioned when I was growing up how, um, we just were going fast all the time. But one thing we, that my mom did, she put us on a lot of different horses and we fixed a lot of people's horses and a lot of ruined horses and troubled horses. And so, um, I developed a skill set of fixing things all at speed. And that's really where majority of my skill is. And then I can ride a horse and bring a horse through and train one, but really what I enjoy and maybe where my best skill set is on a horse is 
at speed, going fast, making things happen. Um, so that ties into how, what kind of horses I can ride. Um, and so like, if I were to want to breed something or look at that, then the, like, I'm okay with the speed. Um, some people don't want the speed. Some do, uh, you know, the race, the race horses have had a big impact on our barrel racing world. And so now when people are looking at breeding horses, um, they might say, yeah, I need something that's a little faster than, than this type of horse. So, um, and now the race horses, you know, historically the race horses were a little crazy and a little hard to handle. And then they didn't really want to turn. So you had all that speed, but boy, you had to, people had to really pull on them to get around a turn. And so, but they'd make up the time on the straightaways. Um, now these race horses, <clears throat> like I'm riding both, they're both kind of straight race horses. They have so much rate and turn that, that, I mean, you can be so fast to a turn, but they come in and just crank a turn on their own because they have the rate and turn. So um, I think that's where the barrel racing industry is starting to kind of transition to, or it has a bigger impact and a bigger influence. If you're looking at our, the barrel horse studs we have now, um, I think majority of them do have some race, kind of the running blood in them. And, and it's made it for a fun barrel race because look at our event is about speed and, and it, uh, it's exciting to watch a horse go in somewhere wide open and make a turn wide open and hardly slow that down their feet. So um, anything we can do to make it an exciting event, I think is uh, pretty beneficial, but, um, but there can be, there's just so many combinations that some people, you know, raise their own. Some just go buy what they want. And I'm, you, I mean, there's, it's huge. And I, and I don't know uh, probably as much of the music industry, like, <clears throat> like you obviously do, but it's probably like some people who, songwrite you know start songwriting and then or you know <laughs> do nothing with it or somebody that says hey i want my songs to be heard and they're going to go find an artist to record them and, and right. you know so it just depends on the level of the person and kind of their grit and their push on what they want to accomplish and and there's just so many opportunities to and combinations that can happen to be successful really i love it i love it well speaking of music we're going to dial it in there are you, uh, you sound pretty professional as far as your approach when you go in, but are, are you like a hype music before you get ready to ride person? What, what, what's your ride as you're about to take that horse in the ring? What, what's your deal? What do you like? Well, I love music, so I can listen to, you know, kind of some quieter music sometimes, uh, you know, just a favorite kind of slow song is fine. Kind of keep things dialed down just a little bit. Uh, you know, if you're, if, if I'm too aggressive or too hyper, then that can, <laughs> that can spill into, to how, um, I handle the horses. Um, but some songs and I love, sometimes I need a little pick me up and kind of a focus song. So, uh, it's, it just really depends on kind of what's going on that day. And I really just flow with what I need that day. And, and that's kind of my approach on those horses too, is look, I am riding that horse that day in that pen. What do I need to do right then? And so I, I really adjust to, to that. And I really don't look at what I'm doing in six months. I'm looking at that run right then. And, and I'm riding young horses. And so as you develop them, that's something that has to happen because you can't be thinking about six months down the road when you've got to go do your job right then. <clears throat> Love it. I love it. Well, obviously the NFR is what's next for you. So I'm not going to say what's next, but what are you looking forward to in the next year in general? You know, I'm looking forward to, um, I'm, I'm excited about uh, the folks at High Point bought these geldings. Uh, they're, they're very, very successful in the horse world and um, they have a lot of experience and knowledge and they're competitors and champions and world champions, a court horse show and, um, so there, there's going to be some things that I think they, that we can address, uh, that will help these geldings even more, um, mainly nutrition, <clears throat> kind of balance the balance, their diet and, um, help them feel at their absolute best and be, you know, support the athletes that they are. And, um, so we're going to, I'm going to kind of continue to do what I've been doing, which is still, you know, just go to the winter rodeos, go to some big barrel races, uh, make a little summer run and, and um, 
try to keep them healthy and happy. And that's the biggest thing. If I can keep them healthy and happy, uh, then they can continue to compete and be successful at a high level so that I, together as a team, we can accomplish some great things. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to let you run off here. Is there anything you want to leave our crowd with or anything you'd like to, to say before we part ways here? Well, music is an amazing thing and, and it stimulates just so much fun, emotion and uh, love for life and, and any way that we can find those happy things in life that drive us and help give us purpose. I'm all for it. And I say, let's push through and make some great songs. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking your morning with us and uh, good luck at the NFR. We'll be cheering you on. I don't, we're, we're trying to be out there this year. I'm not sure if it's going to happen this year or not, but uh, if we do, I'll definitely try to catch up with you. Absolutely. Well, let me know and anything you guys need, just let us know. Hey, likewise. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good day. You too.